Special thanks to Ultra Source USA for providing the high quality mineral oil. If you're in the need for food equipment or industrial supplies, check out the links in the description below. The first step was to get this $30 Craigslist find and get it out of the case and get it clean because mineral oil will clean off all the dust and you will contaminate the oil. So here's our current setup. I have the fan here I'm eventually gonna drop in. I have my power button and an extra external USB that I took off the top of the case and then I mounted up some USB ports here so I can leave this out of the water hanging and still mount controllers and keyboards and things. There's the uh, 500 gig 7200 RPM hard drive. Uh, we have the uh, GeForce, which has 512 megabytes of RAM. And then we have the uh, Intel Core 2 uh, 6600 running at 2.4 gigahertz. And then we have four gigs of DDR2 RAM. We're running Windows 7. 500 watt power supply by Antec as well. That's all gonna be going inside of this tank here very momentarily. So here it is, stock clock at the 2.4, running at 1.128 volts. And uh, currently it's at 1.6 gigahertz, but we're gonna go ahead and do a load test here. Here's the stock temperature outside of the oil. And then now we're stress testing it right now. You can see there it jumped up about 12 degrees. Um, as it goes to 100% load. You'll see here in just a moment that we passed on the initial stress test. After the bench test, it was time to put the computer in the oil. As you can see, everything was pre-hooked up, so I just dropped it all in there and made it as clean looking as possible. At this point, the computer was on in the mineral oil, but the tank wasn't quite topped off yet, and I still have to secure the hard drive there you do not want to put your spinning disk hard drive in mineral oil. You can put an SSD in there, no problem. Um, these are some LED lights I had that weren't as bright as I thought. Um, so I'm going to clean up this wiring a little bit. I actually don't need all this wiring here. It's just to get those LEDs. Um, had the fans on, both on the graphics card and the processor, as well as there's that blue LED fan in the corner as well. It does absolutely nothing, but it looks cool, <laughs> nonetheless. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill the rest of this uh, tank up to the top and then put the glass back on and illuminate the lights underneath. Now to start overclocking, and the first thing to do is reboot, start in your BIOS. In your BIOS, go ahead and disable things like Intel Speed Step, PC, PCEI support, all that stuff. You don't need it, and uh, if you don't need to run it, that's better for your um, motherboard and your processor. So disable all that stuff, like IDE controllers as well. Then you're going to head over to Jumper Configurations, and within there is where you can set your processor speed. Once here, we wanna go ahead and switch from auto to manual. And here you can change the CPU frequency. Right now it's currently stock at 266. And then below it is the DRAM frequency. So what we do here is you manually type in, we're gonna start at 300. This is multipliers of nine. So this by going from 266, 300, that's gonna be 34 times nine additional megahertz. And then you wanna match that with your DDR frequency to have a one, one ratio. So if we're running at 300, uh, uh, as our multiplier on the CPU frequency, we want to run 600 megahertz on our DDR because DDR2 is double data rate. So it's going to be double whatever the front side bus is on our uh, CPU. Once we've done that, we're going to hit F10 to save and restart and boot up at, on our new overclocked settings. So here we are doing another stress test and we passed. Wasn't too difficult. We are now at 2.88 gigahertz and we we're running at 1.384 volts so you can see the cpu needs a lot more volts then we went up again to 3.15 we passed again and as you saw the temps we're getting close to 60 degrees now on the temperatures and uh, volts even more 1.38 now and then finally 3.375 stress testing as you can see the highest temp it got up to was 65 which is that's about as high as you want to go there we kept pushing along though, I wanted to get over one gigahertz. I was unable to get that. You can see here that the computer crashes, but I end up getting a little higher than uh, 3.4. So we're at 3.465. Let's do a bench test. Oh boy, it's going up to 70 degrees here. 70, 73, 80, so it's pretty high. 
as you can see, it's taking a ton of volts and it's very hot. I would say the best setup for this is 3.3 gigahertz. Running pretty good, actually. Bro, I'm telling you, that CPU you have is a pretty good CPU. The Enzo Forge of Duo is still decent. Oh, you crashed. Blue screen. Overclock too hard, bro. So in conclusion, that was a little too much and I found the limits of my current setup. If I really wanted to take it further, what I need to do is add oil coolers, which will actually cool down the oil because as the computer stays on for longer periods of time, the whole even though there's tons of gallons of oil in here, it will still slowly heat the oil, just like a boiling pot of water, something like that. So if I really wanted to push it to the extreme, I think I could get it at 3.5 if I had some sort of oil cooler. But in its current setup, I think a 3.2 or 3.3 could run totally stable on this current setup here. It was a really fun project. Let me know if you guys have any questions. There's a lot of cool setups like this and it just shows all the cool, interesting things you can do with computers, as well as that there's a lot of old technology out there that you can get for a really inexpensive price that still performs really well, like this $30 computer I have here. So I hope you like this video. Don't forget to give it a little thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.